My name is Meyer Koplow, a proud member of the class of 1972 and the parent of two Brandeis graduates from the classes of 2002 and 2005. I am chair of the Brandeis Board of Trustees and I'm honored to have the opportunity to honor President Robert Zimmer upon the occasion of the receipt of an honorary degree from Brandeis University. President Zimmer and this year's recipients each represent not only the spirit of Brandeis, but embody the perseverance that our university has had to face within their own accomplishments and leadership. For President Zimmer, this has been advocating for an equitable education for all and fighting the barriers that would otherwise prevent so many from receiving the higher level of education that they deserve. President Zimmer, I am inspired by your many achievements and I'm honored to celebrate you today. You join an impressive list of distinguished individuals who Brandeis has had the privilege of recognizing with an honorary degree. President Leibowitz and Provost Fiorki, by the enactment of chapter 123 of the Acts of 1951, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts authorized Brandeis University to confer honorary degrees. I have the privilege to instruct you to confer an honorary degree upon Robert Jeffrey Zimmer for his singular achievements. Robert J. Zimmer, over your long and celebrated career as a pioneering mathematician, distinguished scholar, and transformative university president, you have eloquently championed freedom of expression and robust debate. Throughout your mathematical career, which began as a Brandeis undergraduate, you solve complex problems of geometry and symmetry, devising what famously came to be known as Zimmer's conjecture. You then became one of the most persuasive and principled voices in higher education. Since 2006, as president of the University of Chicago, you have helped profoundly reshape the institution and your passionate defense of discourse, argument, and lack of deference in the name of learning has sparked a national conversation about the meaning and value of education. During your tenure as president, you have increased access to higher education for first-generation, rural, and low-income students, while vastly increasing financial aid and eliminating loans from the college equation, making it possible for your students to graduate debt-free. Your intellectual and academic life dazzles in an elegant geometry of imagination and quest, principle and purpose. For your unrelenting commitment to an academic environment, where educational excellence is available to all, Brandeis is proud to award you its highest honor. Congratulations. Hello, I am Provost Carol Fierke, and I'm delighted to reflect upon the many accomplishments of our esteemed academic colleague, Bob Zimmer. Appointed in 2006 as the 13th president of the University of Chicago, Bob Zimmer is a strong advocate for access and affordability in higher education and an outspoken defender of the importance of free expression and open discourse on college campuses. In 2014, he commissioned a faculty committee, the Committee on Freedom of Expression, which developed the Chicago Principles. These principles have become a widely adopted national model for promoting free, robust, and uninhibited debate and deliberation in the academy and beyond. In recognition of his work in support of free expression, he was given the Philip Merrill Award for Outstanding Contributions to Liberal Arts Education by the American Council of Trustees and Alumni in 2017. Bob authored four books and more than 80 academic papers in differential geometry, ergodic theory, and other mathematical topics. He was also a distinguished professor and deputy provost at the University of Chicago before joining Brown University from 2006 to 2002 to 2006 as the Ford Foundation Professor of Mathematics and Provost. A 2013 winner of Brandeis Alumni Achievement Award, Bob served on the National Science Foundation's governing board from 2011 to 2016 
and on the President's Committee on the National Medal of Science from 2008 to 2010. Bob earned master's and PhD degrees from Harvard University. He's held teaching positions at Harvard as well as at the US Naval Academy and institutions in Australia, France, Israel, Italy, and Switzerland. He also has honorary degrees from Tsinghua University and Colby College, and he will become chancellor of the University of Chicago in September. I would now like to welcome Bob's dear friends, Brandeis board member Sylvia O'Neill and her husband Dan, and Joseph Neubauer, chair of the Board of Trustees of the University of Chicago, to say a few words. Bob will then conclude with some reflections. Bob, Dan and I are honored to be asked to celebrate you, our dear friend and colleague. We are so pleased that Brandeis is bestowing this honorary degree on you. You are the ultimate quintessential graduate, Brandeis graduate of all time. Proud of your roots, brilliant, successful, and committed to making the world a better place. Your achievements are many. An extraordinary university president, a great mathematician, a devoted father, and wonderful husband. Shadi and you have a true partnership. Indeed, you may also be the coolest mathematician that ever lived. <laughs> During your tenure, the University of Chicago became renowned, not just as one of the great academic institutions of the world, but one of the coolest too. In awarding this degree, I hope that Brandeis students will be inspired by you, your commitment to rigorous thinking, independent thought, respect for ideas, and the pursuit of knowledge a clear, brave, strong voice leading the way, not just in academia, but throughout the world, valuing discourse, inquiry, and the open mind. And most of all, you are a match. Congratulations and much love. Rob, well, as usual, it, it's hard to follow, Sylvia, um, but I also want to um, share my congratulations there's so many things that you've done and you've accomplished. It's hard to know where to start, but I, I just want to say a word or two about um, what you've done at the University of Chicago and for really higher education throughout the world. As a former dean, one of the things that I've done is I've studied the history of the University of Chicago. Uh, and I, I think without question, you will go down in history uh, and you're still going. <laughs> so you still have history to go. Um, but based on everything that you've done, you will go down in history of the University of Chicago as truly one of its great, great presidents. Uh, one of the universities, one of the, uh, the leaders of the university that really embodies everything that the university stands for, everything that, make, that makes the university great, and you've made the university uh, even greater. Uh, you will go down along with the great founder of the university, William Rainey Harper, uh, as a truly transformational figure. Uh, and a hundred years from now, when future deans are researching the history of the university, you will be prominent among those who will be studied as one of the great men in the history of the University of Chicago. And the other thing that I want to mention is because of everything that you've done at the University of Chicago uh, as a leader, making the university great, but also embodying the values of uh, free expression open exchange of ideas. You've become a model for universities everywhere. Uh, and it's no accident that around the country, people know of you and regard you as really the greatest living university president. Uh, and for that, along with everything else that you've accomplished, uh, you really are well deserving of this great honor of receiving this honorary degree. So 
Bob, my close friend, our close friend, uh, our congratulations, and we can't wait to um, see you and Shadi uh, in person and um, celebrate uh, this great honor. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Jer Neubauer. It's my pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, Robert Zimmer, to you. My wife, Jeanette, is a Brandeis graduate, a former trustee, and she and I have been long-term supporters of innovation at this university. I'm also chairman of the board of the University of Chicago and have had the privilege of working with Bob Zimmer almost since the first day after he became our 13th president. During the 15 years of his presidency, the University of Chicago has enhanced its eminence among the top ranked, re ranked research universities in the United States and the world. During his tenure, the university has strengthened its position as a preferred destination for world-leading scholars, as well as gifted students. Under Bob's inspired leadership, the university has made substantial investments to fulfill the programmatic ambitions of the faculty, support the exceptional scholarship and education for which the university is known, increase financial support for students, and build relationships with our surrounding neighbors on the south side of Chicago. Personally, I've always defined the essence of a university as great faculty and outstanding students. Since 2006, Bob's vision and leadership have enhanced student success and opportunity. He has grown the tenured and tenured track faculty by 24%, created deeper engagement of our affiliated laboratories, Argo National Laboratory, Fermi National Accelerating Labor Accelerator Laboratory and the Marine Biological Sciences Laboratory, all for the benefit of our faculty and students. Bob created Chicago's first engineering program, launched the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering, where applied science and quantum computing are just a couple of the examples of how his long range vision and can do attitude resulted in totally new fields of inquiry, not only for the university, but for the academy at large. He also insisted on the value and need for arts and humanities education, constructing a new arts building, as well as a Mansueti Institute for Urban in Innovation, among many other noteworthy innovations. Dr driven by his devotion to Chicago's core principles, with emphasis of, on rigorous scholarship inquiry, academic freedom of expression, as well as the diversity and inclusion, Bob reinforced Chicago's distinct culture, heritage, while helping the institution evolve appropriately to unique challenges of our time. These many achievements require a clear vision, a strong disciplined team, and an ever-growing list of partners and supporters. Bob will continue to provide leadership to the University of Chicago in his new role as Chancellor. Bob would not have achieved any of these without the strong foundation his undergraduate years at Brandeis provided. I want to congratulate Brandeis University for selecting one of its own, Bob Zimmer, to receive an honorary degree today. I can think of no other academic leader who pursues the Brandeis motto, truth even unto its innermost part, more passionately than Bob Zimmer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Board Chair Koplo, President Ron Leibowitz, and Provost Carol Fierka for this warm welcome and the generous words. I particularly want to acknowledge and thank President Ron Leibowitz. He and I have had an opportunity to discuss Brandeis, higher education, and the challenges and opportunities of leading these most important institutions. And as an alumnus of Brandeis and a colleague, I have greatly valued the thoughtfulness, values, and wisdom that President Leibowitz has shown. I also want to thank my good friends of long standing, Sylvia Neal, Dan Fischel and Joe Neubauer, 
for generously participating in today's event, for their most generous words, and for their wonderful friendship over the years. One of the features of being at a stage of life where one is fortunate to be receiving an honorary degree is that it offers a time for reflection on the forces that had a strong impact on how your life has unfolded. Of course, one's family, in particular parents and those that came before, inevitably have an outsized impact. For me, Brandeis also had an outsized impact, and I would point out three important ways this was manifest. The first concerns mathematics. It was at Brandeis that I first experienced mathematics in a mature form, saw the power and beauty of its multiple approaches to structure, and the sheer excitement of this remarkable area of human endeavor. I had the benefit of a wonderful mathematics faculty here at Brandeis that guided this discovery. And I want to mention Michael Spivak, Al Vasquez, and Dick Palais, now all gone from Brandeis, who were particularly inspiring in opening up this extraordinary world for me. And I also want to mention Stefan Berko, a physicist who made that subject, of course, one closely related to mathematics, come alive for me. The second important influence of Brandeis was an education beyond mathematics and physics, namely the excitement of a liberal arts curriculum in which one learned to deeply appreciate context, culture, and history as important frameworks for all topics of study and analysis has stayed with me my whole life and which I feel serves me well every day. In this regard, I want to mention Professors Richard Honorado and Philip Rav, who conveyed the joys and skills of reading, reading carefully, reading in context, and showing how careful and contextual reading greatly enhanced the enjoyment of the beauty of what was being read. And I want to mention Henry David Aiken and the joy of the Scottish Enlightenment and reading David Hume. And third was the environment of endless discourse with friends at Brandeis. In discussing the importance of free expression and open discourse around the country, as I do, it is evident that in the current period, many persons unfortunately seem to only feel comfortable if people have the same general views as they do, limiting their friendships and what they can learn from them. In contrast, I often recall growing up in Greenwich Village and then the tumultuous 60s at Brandeis, a time of the civil rights movement and conflicts about the Vietnam War. In both of these cases, there was lots of argument, lots of discussion, and then we would all go together to play stickball or bridge if in New York, or bridge or touch football if at Brandeis. Disagreements did not mean we could not be friends or close. It meant we had plenty to discuss. This too was a valuable educational and social feature at Brandeis, one that I value and that continues to stay with me every day. Let me conclude by again expressing my thanks. Brandeis gave me a great deal, only some of which I have tried to indicate today. It is a moment to recognize this and express thanks for it. Likewise, I am deeply appreciative of the recognition of my work by virtue of the honorary degree awarded today, something I will always greatly value, and I want to express my deep appreciation to the leadership of Brandeis, the faculty, the board, and all those who had a hand in my receiving this recognition. So for today, and for the past and its impact on the present and future, let me say thank you to all of Brandeis University. Once again, congratulations to Bob. And now, please join us for the singing of our alma mater.
Truth is